I go down to the river and pray. <laughs> Studying about that good old way. I think I'll take you on down to the river this morning. Tell you a little story here. Uh, we had a fellow out here working on the creek at the resort. When you're at, at this rustic resort, there's there's a lot of rock work to do. And we had him work on a fireplace and a couple walls. He, uh, he was talented at it and, and a good worker. Well, he didn't show up for a while. He just kind of dropped off and I didn't know what happened to him. He doesn't report to me. I don't manage the resort. Um, I'm just around for help. Uh, this fella, he got real sick and he spent a long time, like 15 days, I think, something like that, uh, in the ICU. And no, no, I didn't even know this happened. And he shows up back to work, just out of the blue. And he looks different. I mean, just sick looking. Um, lost a bunch of weight. You could tell his strength had just left him. Gone. No strength left. You know, I just wanted to talk to him. I'd heard he got sick. And so I, one day I was just walking through the resort and paid him a, a visit. He was working on a wheelbarrow, you know, just doing doing something while some rock set up on a wall he was working on. And um, I said, hey, you know, how how's it going? I heard you'd gotten sick. He said, oh man, did I get sick. He said that something busted his esophagus or something i don't know what it was but it it was bad he was just telling me about how his liver was failing he's turning yellow uh, he had some sores on him i mean he was just in bad shape but he's still working and he'd still work hard which is amazing to me because there's so many people that man get a paper cut and, and can't go to work <laughs> you know but this fella he was a worker and I respect that and appreciate it. But I had concern for him because I knew that he wasn't well. So I just asked him, I said, do you believe in God, Daryl? He said, yeah, I do, I guess. I said, okay. I said, well, I just don't think he's done with you yet. And I believe that in my heart, that he had an opportunity still um, to maybe do something, do some business with God, I don't know. But after that meeting, I was just burdened for him. Um, concerned uh, for him, because you gotta understand something. Uh, whether you believe it or not, uh, there's an eternity. There's something beyond this life. And, and the scriptures make it clear that what happens there is dependent on something that happens here before you take your last breath. And it has everything to do with Jesus. And I just didn't know if he knew Jesus as a Savior because that's, it's vital. It is, it's critical. It's the most important thing in life. I, I really can't express that enough. Nothing else matters more than uh, where you are with Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> I started praying for him every night. And uh, me and little Esther in our prayers at night, we'd pray for this man. And I just hoped for an opportunity just to talk to him because I was scared for him. He was very sick. And uh, I knew his time was short. And so, uh, one day I was just walking by and I saw him and his uh, partner that they worked together uh, working on a wall. And I, I said, I gotta, I gotta take some time and talk to him. And I just went up to him and I said, hey, man, you got me nervous. I'm worried about you. Uh, can I ask you a question? And, and, and it's, a, it's a difficult question <laughs> that no one, uh, well, I won't say no one, but a lot of people don't know how to answer sometimes. And 
And I just said, hey, Daryl, do you, do you think if you were to die that you'd go to heaven? And he, he said, well, yeah, yeah, I, I think so, yeah. And I said, okay, let's, let's spin this thing around real quick. Say I'm someone who doesn't know how to go to heaven, doesn't understand it, and I were to ask you, how do I go to heaven? How does that happen? What must be done? Could you tell me? And he goes, ah, you know, I, I, I really couldn't. So there you go. There's a, there's a dilemma. And I go on to talk to him about Jesus. And I just tell him, you know, what happened to me on May 7, 2004. Someone told me Jesus saves. It's that simple. I knew I had some problems. I knew I was living wrong. I knew that I had sinned. Uh, maybe people would thought I was all right, and that's fine. There's a lot of people who are all right that are good people that still need Jesus. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that we're still all born into a condition that, that uh, needs a remedy outside of ourselves. That's all there is to it. And so I just go tell him I love him, and I just I'm <laughs> I'm concerned about him, and uh, I give him a little pamphlet that puts the gospel in just super plain. It puts it out there just plain as can be, uh, simple scriptures, uh, looking at the truth uh, through the scriptures, not man's religion uh, i know people say well man wrote the bible you can tear me up if you want uh on, on online we can talk about that uh i'm telling you it's not a religion when it comes to having faith in christ uh and i just told him about what happened to me and uh I told him about what the Bible has to say. Uh, there's so many people who've been just rotten their whole life. Let's just face it. And, uh, you know, uh, there's no sin that's <laughs> greater than Jesus. Uh, there's nothing you can do on your own. There, there's nothing you can do. I mean, we are all on the same playing field here. Uh, it says all have sinned. That's it. Boom. Done. And, uh, you know, I just talked to him about it, and, man, this stammering tongue, and, you know, some people just don't like how I talk, and I get all nervous about it, and, it, but here's a man who's just genuinely concerned about this guy, and I just told him, look, here's, here's a, read this pamphlet for me, I, and, and, and just think about what I've said, because, you know, I love you, and I'm just concerned about you, and that's all. Uh, you know, I heard someone say a thousand people will die today making plans for next week. And that is the truth. And what happens after? I don't want your money. I don't want nothing from you. I I want to see you on the other side. That's the, that is just point blank. I want to see you there. And, uh, you know, I didn't hear another thing about this guy. They, uh, you know, a week later... I haven't heard him, haven't seen him. And it turns out that very night he fell ill. And he didn't recover. And uh, he died. But before that, his partner, who was listening to that whole conversation, he comes to my wife. And he says, I need to talk to Jeremy because somebody sent him to Daryl that day. And he, he proceeds to tell my wife, we got into the truck and started heading home and Daryl picked up that little pamphlet and he started reading it and he read it out loud and started to weep and cry and Jeremy was sent to him that day. I don't understand things. 
completely. There's only a few things I know for sure. Um, but what I can say <laughs> is there was two grown men. He said people probably thought I was crazy. We were crazy. But there was two grown men sitting in their truck on the side of the road crying before God. And hey, I have some hope that when I die and I go to be with the Lord, someone that I'm going to see there smiling might be smoking a little bit, <laughs> barely got in. But my hope is that he did get in right there before the end. And it reminds me of the thief on the cross right there at the end. Uh, Jesus told him, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now, you can wait to the end if you want and hope. <laughs> uh, you know that I always have time. People say, you know, I got time. I got time to get right. Man, life is better if you just make the time now. I never understood why people would think that somehow walking with God and being right with Jesus is drudgery or something. Maybe there's things that you know aren't right in your life. I don't know. And you just don't want to let go of that. You know that Jesus might want to change some things. I don't know. I'm going to tell you, I haven't regretted it, and I won't. Worst thing, probably, is there's going to be some people that don't understand and don't like you because you believe something, but... The Bible talks about some unsearchable riches. And I'd rather take those any day. Anyway, there's your little rambling. That's some serious rambling there, isn't it? 